All right, welcome back people. So this is sort of the finishing piece. Um, and it's basically, we're, we're trying to think of what are possible next steps. Um, my background is community organizing. So, so this is hopes and dreams. And I, I've seen this happen and starting to happen in Austin ISD. So maybe some of y'all have done some of these hopes and dreams. But the idea basically is that we uh, need a community to implement anything. And um, there are a lot of useless meetings that teachers go to. Have you been to any useless meetings? <laughs> and so how do we make sure that the little, little itty bitsy time that we have is actually time that is actually useful to us and really helps the kids? Because in the end, that's, that's really what we're trying to get to. And, um, and, and that's the intent of building, building communities where, where we really take advantage of that time. Um, I've also done this, done this activity in my own classroom. Um, since I teach teachers, I, I use this as part of the, the community building component. And ideally what you need to do um, is you have the students go out in partners and basically um, learn each other's hopes and dreams. Um, and the idea is really that we learn each other's internal motivations so that we can build a classroom community. And that, that, we're, that we're here, that we have real reasons to be working together and by learning each other's internal motivations, we know that um, how we support each other is to support the in internal motivations of our peers in the classroom. And in this case, um, in the teacher organizations that I've helped build, um, the teachers, when we come together, we know that maybe right now we're not working on what I need to work on, but that eventually I have trust and the other people will, will, will get to support us in building um, what we need to work on. And so uh, we call these platicas, we call these communities of support, communities of peer support. And the groups that I've been working on come together to share curriculum, share instructional strategies, but also just do intense listening that only teachers who understand what other teachers are going through can go through. When we talk about creating healing spaces, that's be becoming really crucial after this year. So, um, generally it happens first you do this as partners and then you get the partners to get together in groups of four or five and then after the groups in four or five we do this as a whole group. Um, we don't have time for that so we're going to do this basically straight as a whole group recognizing that this is um, ideally first done in, in smaller groups but at least it starts to give us ideas and help hope each other's what are both our internal motivations and also help, helps the thinking about what are the things that we can do to support each other in, in, in building the, those hopes and dreams? And so you see these are sort of four questions that we go through, um, our hopes and dreams, then the strengths and needs that we have, and, and what do we need to do to, to, to make those hopes and dreams a reality, um, finding those common hopes and dreams, concerns we have in building those hopes and dreams, and, and we finally leave with, with next steps. And so... The hopes and dreams questions basically is, what are our hopes and dreams in creating ethnic studies? Why is ethnic studies important? And, um, and this is really best done, not through a chat, but really talking out loud. Um, um, what are our hopes and dreams for ethnic studies? So we can give you a minute to write down and let's give people just a minute to, to brainstorm your answer to that questions. What are your hopes and dreams for ethnic studies? And then if we could share uh, for about five minutes, two or three people's hopes and dreams before we model the next questions. So a minute of quiet reflection. I forgot to mention the, the closer you can get to a personal story and making this personal for, for you, uh, the closer you can get to your own internal motivations. So my hopes and dreams would be, I hope, uh, I want to have internal, I want to have hopes uh, ethnic studies in my teacher education program because I have a lot of Mexican American students in particular who are confused about their own identity and are going to be teaching other uh, Mexican American uh, students. And so I'm concerned. I'm really concerned that they haven't had the chance to think about all the confusing things that the U.S. school system does to them. Let me now give you 30 seconds, sorry. I just forgot to mention that piece. All right, is someone um, willing to volunteer to share? 
I'm willing to share. Go for it, Travis. Um, so I, I'm currently in my second year of teaching and then next year will be my first year of teaching ethnic studies. And so my hopes and dreams for ethnic studies is to kind of, to teach the history that I, you know, got into teaching history for, uh, that, that was, that's my big motivation in taking on this new, new, new journey of teaching ethnic studies, uh, was when I, I as, as I started to teach U.S. history, I started to realize how much history that I loved learning about in college that I wasn't teaching at all, right? My collection about the blues was a good example of that, right? I didn't get to teach any of that <clears throat> in U.S. history just because it doesn't, it doesn't fall into the teaks naturally and also timeline and, and all of the things and star testing and all the things that we have to worry about. Um, but I think that with with this ethnic studies course, I will be able to fulfill the, my hopes and dreams of, of teaching the history that I wanted to teach as I got into teaching U.S. history. Thank you, Travis. Someone have a connection to that or a, a different thought of different hopes and dreams? I, I have connection to that. Um, you know, it's not just with ethnic studies, but what we've gone through with the past year that we have empathy. And that's my hope and dream to have empathy for the other and for ourselves. And um, somebody once told me, you know, hurt people hurt. And if we have an understanding, there's more clarity and faith in humanity. It's been a tough year for our students. I most definitely hear that. And uh, it's hard to listen, hard, hard, really hard to have empathy, yeah. All right, someone have a connection to one of those two or, or, or a different one? I'll be happy to share. I'm lucky enough to have two amazing colleagues who were with me from my campus in this group. And so um, I have this great dream of ethnic studies being not just a course, but being campus-wide and of actually um, incorporating our rebuilding, redefining our multicultural awareness club and um, our, we had experimented one day with culture day and it was really well received, but we had one stab at it um, before COVID and to sort of just, you know, I would love to see this as a campus wide culture, um, not just a class. Sounds great. So what I wanna now, just because of timing, what now what we wanna put that stuff on the chat so you've heard some ideas. I'm gonna give you a minute or two just to put your hopes and dreams on the chat before we move on to the next question. All right. So feeling, feeling just a little bit of this, I think now I wanna open this up to the next question which is our strengths and our needs. I think too often we move into our, our needs and concerns. If we wanna right, model that asset-based approach with our, with our students, we need to think about what we do well so that we can start addressing our needs and our concerns. So this is our time to pat ourselves on our back and say, this is what I do well. All right, and ideally, if we could have some new people sharing out what you see as your own strengths as you think about your hopes and your dreams. It's always a bit hard. So there's an advantage to writing it first, but we do eventually want people to say this out loud. There's a strength in saying it out loud. Brittany, go for it. Um, I'm good. I worked really hard this year on asking reflective questions, asking students to challenge what they have historically thought to be the truth, which is often the white narrative and digging deeper. My challenge is I don't know what I don't know because I did grow up with the white narrative. And so I know I need more education. Supposed to stop you with the strengths, right? This is where we <laughs> we do this to ourselves, right? And, and when we talk about even gendered, this is something that particularly women are, are particularly good at. 
we beat ourselves up. And so ideally in an ideal world, but yes, you know where we're going, but we're supposed to, this is the time where we're just supposed to say yes. And it is so hard to be reflexive during the school day. You have 45 minutes and how do you find time to be reflexive? Thank you, Brittany. Somebody else. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, Alshon. All right. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I think one of my strengths is uh, relationship building with my students. Um, and then kind of I saw what Makina put is creating safe spaces. So I literally have to kick students out of my class um, classroom. You know, they just come and visit me just to say hi or just just to chat. So I, I think that's one of my strengths. Um, this is going to be my first year teaching ethnic studies. Um, and then it's pretty much a pilot for our district in Leander ISD. So I'm taking over from um, a teacher that that previously taught it, um, but she's no longer with the school. So I don't have the resources. Um, and then kind of like what you were saying, Brittany, um, I just don't know because I wasn't taught uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of the material. So um, I'm energized in learning it. And so my hopes and dreams are just to send that energy to my students and then, um, you know, creating uh, safe spaces, but for them to also be better citizens and, and be more aware. Thank you. Yes. And uh... I'm hoping that all of you have received our package of instructional aids by now. And uh, we chose a book uh, to gift you um, called Lies My Teacher Told Me because it hits the high points of some of those um, myths that are propagated in American history class in particular, but also it's about critical thinking. So uh, to me, that's a nice transition. We are, time is gonna always be an issue like it's always been an issue. You're starting to see how this naturally given time, we, we think of this minimum half hour time period to do this activity um, to an hour and a half. 30, uh, there's, you know, we have X amount of time in our classroom. I, I generally take about 45 minutes, but that final question is, and we do wanna, with the students where they're forced to create that classroom community, this is where you create those questions of, if we wanna create a community that does, and you list the hopes and dreams of everybody, what, what, are, our, what, what, are, the, what are our norms or, or what, what is the contract that we have to create in order to create this trust in our classroom?